Almost everywhere I look online, people are talking about 2021 and how it's going to be a raging bull market for cryptocurrencies. A lot like 2017, 2013. I mean, it makes sense. We've seen a huge run up in cryptocurrency prices this year. And a lot of people think we're just going to blow past those all time highs and create new ones. And in this video, I want to talk about that as a blockchain developer who's in the trenches working with this stuff on a daily basis, because I think this new bull market is going to be a lot different than ones in the past. All right. So you're going to want to watch this whole video to find out how. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. So do I personally think that we're in a bull market? So it's not financial advice, but the short answer is yes. We've seen cryptocurrency prices go up like crazy this year. And if you look at the one year chart, you know, this is a clear bull trend that's approaching a new all time high. All right. And you could have gotten a really nice return on this, depending on where you got in on this chart. And that's pretty much true of all the major market cap cryptocurrencies. And it stands to reason because all the fundamentals are there. And there are so many factors. You know, 2020 has been the year of the DeFi boom. We've seen the entire DeFi space blow up over 10x in a matter of months. We've seen a ton of institutional investment in Bitcoin lately. We've seen PayPal get into the cryptocurrency game. We're seeing the beginning rollout of the long-awaited Ethereum 2.0. And a lot of other global macro trends like uh, loose monetary policy, weakening of fiat currencies, and also to the general recovery that's happen for the big downturn that happened, you know, earlier in March this year. So yes, I do think that we're currently in a cryptocurrency bull market, but will it keep up? Well, a lot of people think this trend is going to continue on and that we're going to push to new all-time highs and that we're going to see a major cryptocurrency bull run in 2021 that looks a lot like uh, some of the past major bull runs like 2013 and 2017. Now, I don't personally claim to know what the cryptocurrency prices are going to be in the future. And as always, this is not financial advice. But if that's true, if we do actually see a raging bull market in 2021 like we did in the past, then I want to talk about what's likely going to happen. So the first thing that I think is going to happen is we're going to see greater adoption of blockchain technology. Interest in blockchain is highly correlated with the price. So basically, like whenever the Bitcoin price is going up like crazy or the Ethereum price, then it always attracts more eyeballs to the technology. And it also works the opposite way when the price is going down. People care about it less. And I was here throughout the entire 2018-19 bear market. So I understand firsthand how this stuff works. <laughs> And if this bull run keeps up, then we're going to see a lot of adoption of blockchain technology. And that's one way that I think this is going to be a lot different from last time. See, during the last cryptocurrency bull market, people got really excited about blockchain technology. But then when they go try to use it, they basically ran into a dead end. And that's for a few reasons, because, you know, one of the big things that drove the last big bull run were ICOs. And a lot of these ICOs are raising money for projects that didn't exist yet. So if you gave, you know, money to an ICO and that was your introduction to blockchain technology and then you go try to use it, you wouldn't really find any existing products. That's because a lot of them haven't shipped and wouldn't ship for years to come. And that's not the case this time. People aren't sitting around saying like, you know, where are the dApps? Well, you can just go to a website like DeFiPulse.com and see any of the blockchain applications listed there that are running now that have lots of users and, you know, verifiable volume on them and you can just click through and start using them, okay? And so that's a major thing. I mean, you can actually see the dApps and, and play around with them, but you can also see the real benefits. You know, I talk about this a lot on my channel that uh, to me, you know, competitive savings rates are one of the killer apps of blockchain technology because it's a use case that most people can understand and get on board with easily. So if you just go to a website like compoundfinance.com, a normal user can see that they can earn a competitive savings rate on a stable cryptocurrency like USDC, for example, right? Oftentimes better than what they could in their bank account, like in their savings account or their checking account. And so that's a huge benefit. You know, in the last bull run, you couldn't take cryptocurrency and put it into an application that you could see in your computer screen, actually use it and get some tangible benefit out of it. It just didn't exist. So we don't have a ghost town anymore. We have a really great foundation to build on top of. So another big thing is better user experience because during the last cycle, I mean, there were a few dApps out there, but basically you had to install you know, MetaMask for Chrome as the only way that you could, you know, use this application. And you had to go buy cryptocurrency on one exchange, transfer it to your MetaMask before you could even do anything is a huge drop-off point. And that workflow has improved quite a bit since the last one. So we have a lot better user experience. 
Now users can participate in blockchain technology on their mobile devices all in one place, right? So you think about apps like Dharma, for example, or Argent, all right? These have really great onboarding strategies where people can basically plug in uh, their debit card, credit card on their phone and buy cryptocurrency directly that way and then interact with these DeFi protocols like, you know, Compound Finance directly from their mobile app. They don't have to download a Google Chrome extension like MetaMask. They don't have to use it on their desktop browser. They can do everything in one place inside their mobile phone. And so this user experience is a lot better and is gonna be a huge catalyst for blockchain adoption in my opinion. And so that's the first major thing that I think we're gonna see out of this uh, cryptocurrency bull market is more adoption of blockchain technology. And in summary, I just would say that the space is much more mature right now and it lends itself for retention. It's way more sticky for new users than it was, you know, two or three years ago. And now, of course, we still have a long way to go. You know, this space isn't like totally mature yet, but there's a clear light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I talked about how E2.0 is basically here. You know, the staking contract has gone live at the time of recording this video. We're already beginning that transition process. And so that's the type of thing that users can see tangible progress towards and can basically just count down the days until we have those really fast transactions on the blockchain that get this technology ready for prime time. And of course, a lot of these applications are going to migrate to that. And we'll see a lot of the bottleneck that's been holding back blockchain adoption just removed completely. So more adoption means more demand. And more demand is going to mean a lot of other things too, which I'm really excited about. So one of the major things is a much more rich ecosystem. So basically, when there's more users, there's going to be a big carrot dangled there for more applications to get created. So I think we're going to see you know a list like this explode in the coming years, um, where we're going to see new applications getting built on the top of the blockchain. Some of these are going to be uh, competitors to other projects as they try to gain, you know, market share uh, for the specific need that the app is fulfilling. But it's also going to spark innovation. And I think we're probably going to see uh, brand new apps do things that other apps haven't done before. And that's exciting because it gives more benefits to new users and it creates this sort of cyclical effect where basically, you know, more demand creates more apps, more apps creates more demand until the space just sort of snowballs and keeps going. And when you combine that with, uh, you know, price increases where basically like price increases attract people into the space who use the applications, the more people use the applications, the more the price also increases because of market sentiment. And it's just this crazy snowball that I'm really excited to see where it goes. And another thing that's going to be really exciting to watch happen is as this demand increases, you know, as more projects are getting built, you know, brand new possibilities are going to emerge because of the different pieces that are being built. It's talking about DeFi being a money Legos type of situation where, you know, one protocol does this and one protocol does that. And you can plug the two protocols in to do a new thing. As demand, you know, increases and that creates more applications, we're probably going to see new protocols created that do new things. And now we can make new combinations to create this new level of possibilities that we've never seen before. And that's going to be really exciting. You know, some stuff on the roadmap that I'm super excited about are products like Aave that are talking about integrating fiat on ramps into their projects. That's an example of a brand new innovation. And like once somebody does that, they become the leader and there's going to be this huge race for other applications to follow and do a similar type of thing. That's just one example. I think we're going to see lots of these types of things occur as the demand increases because these businesses are going to get more revenue. They can throw money at these problems and try to solve them faster. And these are going to be the types of things that give decentralized finance a really killer use case and make it a competitive technology compared to the legacy financial system. And it's going to make it a much more uh, compelling technology that's going to make it much more sticky, unlike the last bull run where we're going to see that real adoption, right? And this more adoption is going to mean more demand. More demand means more products. And the more products, more adoption. It's just that snowball over and over again. And so the third major point is that more demand is going to lead to more profit in the space. Okay. And if you care about blockchain technology in any way, if you're watching this video, then this applies to you. So basically the rising demand just means a rising tide that's going to lift all ships. And it kind of funnels down a very specific path. And I want to talk about that. So first of all, you know, when the cryptocurrency prices increase, a lot of the crypto companies who build uh, the, the crypto products that we use on a daily basis, the blockchain applications, and they hold this crypto. And so they're going to get profits from that alone. All right. But then they're also going to get increased profits from the new customers that come into the space who are watching the cryptocurrency prices, learn about the applications, start using them, paying the fees and all that kind of stuff. And so this demand directly impacts the companies, but then these companies have a huge impact on everyone else in the industry. And so if you've been watching this channel and you're interested in you know, getting a job, become a freelancer, creating your own blockchain service-based business, maybe creating an app, and this is going to have an impact on you because, you know, greater demand means more jobs created 
needed, all right? And I guarantee this is happening faster than the, number, than the rate that people are able to fill these jobs. If you want to become a freelancer, it's the same situation. There's going to be a lot more demand for that. If you want to create some sort of service-based business that uh, you know serves blockchain companies, there's going to be more demand for that. And then finally, if you're going to build your own app, this is going to be great for you too, because maybe this app relies on some of those other uh, applications that I talked about. It's going to be more possibilities more users, customers for your applications. It's going to be a huge win all around. And so if you've been watching this space and you're thinking about like, you know, making blockchain your career, then this is going to have a huge impact on you because of simple supply and demand economics, right? Basically, the supply is is small and the demand is already big. But if we actually do see a major bull run like we've been talking about, all these things are true and demand for blockchain technology goes up like crazy, that also means the demand for blockchain professionals is going to go up like crazy. All right, and I guarantee you it's going to go up a lot faster than the supply if people know how to do it. All right. So whenever that demand goes up, that basically means the price of compensation goes up. And it also means that there's more opportunities out there that you can pick and choose from if you want to work in blockchain. And this means that right now is a great time to get into this industry because if you can get it on the ground floor of something that's going up like that, then you're going to have a lot more upward mobility throughout your career. It's way better to start on something that's like, you know, really small and get all the expertise because when it actually does take off, you're going to be way ahead of other people who don't have that knowledge yet. that would be a big gap. So if you're a beginner now, let's say you stay in this space for a year, you're going to say I'll have a big head start from other people who are just getting into the space who are late after they've seen it totally take off. So those are my thoughts on the upcoming cryptocurrency bull market in 2021 and what I think is going to happen in response to that. All right. So as always, this is not financial advice. I don't claim to know what the cryptocurrency prices are going to be in the future. But, you know, if things are going the direction they look like they're headed, this is probably what's going to happen. So if you want to prepare yourself for that, you know, what can you do? Well, first of all, you know, smash the like button down below, subscribe to this channel so you can catch up with this space, you know, as this happens in real time. But I can show you how to become a blockchain developer and take advantage of this big opportunity. So you can go to my YouTube homepage, find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. All right. If you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, uh, then I can show you how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, you know, build your own real world application so that you can, you know, land a high paying job, become a freelancer, build your own app, right? Right. Just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.